It's Friday, November the 15th, 2013. I'm Mark Chastley, and this is episode number 8 of TEN, Transport Evolved News, for the week beginning November the 11th, 2013. Nikki's not here again this week, so you're just stuck with me and my stripy jumper. On with the news! Two people are in hospital, and one was discharged yesterday after an accident at the Tesla factory in Fremont. A brief official statement from Tesla confirmed that the accident happened when a failure in a low-pressure aluminium casting press left three employees with burn injuries from hot metal. The accident occurred just after noon local time. A large proportion of the Model S, from its chassis to its door panels, is built from aluminium, so it's unclear at present where on the production line the failure occurred. Tesla's official statement, sent to us by Tesla spokesperson Liz Jarvis-Sheen, reads as follows. There is a failure in a low-pressure aluminium casting press. Three employees were injured by hot metal from that press. We are making sure that they receive the best possible care. The Transport Evolve team hopes that the people involved recover as quickly as possible and our thoughts go out to their loved ones and families at this time. It's no secret that EVs are having a harder time in the UK than the rest of Europe or the US. Our current government, a coalition between our Conservative Party and the Liberal Democrats, doesn't seem to want to push green energy and related technology all that much. But all that may be about to change. Deputy Prime Minister Nick Clegg confirmed this week that Elon Musk, CEO and co-founder of Tesla Motors, has agreed to advise the UK on electric cars. Here at Transport Evolve, we have some conflicting feelings about this. We are stoked that government is taking advice from someone who actually knows what they're talking about, a rarity in the UK. But we worry this may cause some conflict with other EV manufacturers. It's not as if Elon is exactly unbiased when it comes to EVs. Let's just say he's not exactly been positive about the efforts from other companies. One thing we are excited about, however, is how we will deal with the hydrogen situation. The UK government is still seriously looking into a hydrogen network in the UK, and we hope that Elon will bring in some much-needed reality to that discussion. I mean, let's face it, Elon is on record as saying hydrogen is essentially bullshit. We've talked about Nissan's self-driving Leaf before. It's funky, it's cool, it has some amazing blue glowing lights, but it's still in production. So what would you do if you had a prototype self-drive electric car? Well. If you're Nissan, apparently you'd take the country's Prime Minister out for a drive in it. On real roads! I think this shows that Nissan has amazing confidence in this technology. And with Carlos Scone saying that his original 2020 deadline for having cars with this technology on the road is now a no later than date, we can't help but think that Nissan is really upping its efforts in this field. Good for them. In related news when it comes to Nissan and targets, this week Gon admitted that the Renault-Nissan alliance won't have sold 1.5 million EVs by 2016 as they had originally hoped. Talking to the Financial Times, Gon admitted that despite billions of dollars of investment, sales of electric vehicles weren't as high as he'd hoped. The reason? Slow infrastructure rollout, not lack of consumer interest. Dismissing claims that both Nissan and Renault's electric cars are too expensive for many buyers, Gon reiterated his belief that the charging infrastructure has been the number one reason for poor sales, with the absolutely brilliant quote of, I wouldn't buy a gasoline vehicle if there were no gas stations. Here at Transport Evolve, though, we do wonder if this would have still been the case if Nissan and Renault had been using the same charging standards. That way, they'd only have to roll out one type of network, wouldn't they? It's official. The Tesla Model S in the UK will cost a cool £50,280 on the road. This is after a generous £5,000 government grant and inclusive of the usual licensing fees. The starting price, far better than many EV fans had hoped, will get you your base model 60kWh Tesla Model S, complete with massive 19-inch wheels, solid black paint and textile seats. The base model spec will also come with an NEDC range of 240 miles. 200 is nearer the mark, we think. A top speed of 125 miles per hour and a 0 to 60 time of 5.9 seconds. As with the Model S ordering elsewhere in the world, you can customise your Model S to suit your very own tastes, adding features as you please. 11 kilowatt onboard charging will come as standard, while doubling the onboard charging capabilities will cost you £1,250. Supercharging capabilities, standard on the more expensive 85 kilowatt hour version, but extra for the base model, will add £1,900 to the price if you order it before you get the car, £2,400 if you order it afterwards. As for the top spec P85 model with all the bells, whistles and claimed NEDC range of over 310 miles, that'll set you back six figures. But then again, that will get you a pretty awesome ride. And if you're wondering about this title, that's how much a Model S would cost you in Cockney rhyming slang. But we couldn't bring ourselves to do this whole segment in terms of monkeys, ponies and Lady Godivers, even though we know all you US viewers would love it. 
This week, we were able to get our hands on an official press pack for the Kia Soul EV, allowing us to finally look at the car's specs. The Kia Soul EV will come with a 27 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack and an 81.4 kilowatt motor. 0 to 62 miles per hour is expected to take less than 12 seconds, and like its gasoline sibling, it's going to be front wheel drive. Not too bad, but not too great either. And there were a few oddities in the pack as well. On paper, the Kia Soul has a claimed range of more than 200 kilometers on a single charge. That's equivalent to just under 125 miles per charge. Given the Kia's range estimates are likely based on the Japanese test cycles rather than real world range, we suggest an expectation of 80 to 90 miles per charge is likely to be more achievable in the real world. Also, Kia has claimed that the car's Chadamo connector will charge the car from empty to full at 100 kilowatts in around 25 minutes but current Chadamo standard only goes up to 62.5 kilowatts, so we're not quite sure how that works. Pricing has yet to be released, as has availability, but Kia have previously said that it expects the Kia Soul EV to be offered at a price point which reflects the car's value, not one that's designed to stimulate sales. So, expensive then. Getting the winter flu sucks, we all know that. But some clever people at MIT have found a way to use viruses to create some very clever batteries. In a paper published in Nature Communications, the team says they've been able to successfully use a genetically modified variant of a virus to help build nanowires with a phenomenal surface area. You see, the larger the surface area, the more energy the nanowires can transfer at any given moment, making them ideal for use as an electrode in an electric car battery. Instead of using traditional manufacturing processes to build nanowires, which require a great deal of heat and dangerous chemicals to produce, the MIT researchers found they could modify the virus to capture magnesium molecules from the water, surrounding the virus to create a long nanowire structure with spikes on the surface. Amazing! Being spiky instead of smooth, the nanowires have a much greater surface area, leading to the improvement in charging and discharge capabilities. At the moment, the researchers say there's some way to go before the technology could be used in a commercial application, and hint that using viruses to build nanowires on an industrial scale may prove difficult, but this goes to show the level of research that's taken place in the field. The future really is going to be brilliant. Speaking at the New York Times Deal Book Conference in New York, which was also live streamed on CNBC, Musk reiterated his belief that the luxury sedan was far safer than any other car on the market, referencing Tesla's exemplary safety record to date. Pointing out that fires occur in one in every 1,300 gasoline vehicles on average, Musk was keen to note that three fires involved in Teslas represent one fire in every 8,000. We are about five times less likely to have a fire than an average gasoline vehicle, he said. We are definitely not going to do a recall. There is no reason for a recall, I believe. But if it were to go that way, it seems like Tesla already has a plan. In a patent filed on the 5th of December 2011, Tesla themselves laid out plans for a vehicle battery pack ballistic shield, which would help with situations where the battery is impacted from below. Without going into the ins and outs of the specifics in the patent, we believe this shows that Tesla has considered multiple options and many different scenarios when building the Model S. While these three fires have happened fairly close together, this seems more like coincidence than design fault. We think that it should be kept in mind that the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration has not begun an official investigation into the Model S, and that in their own safety test, the Model S got record scores, making it one of the safest cars ever made. That's good. That's it for this week. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode of TEN. In the meantime, visit www.transportevolved.com for all the EV news that's fit to print, subscribe to our channel and other shows on YouTube, and join us live on Sunday where we'll be discussing these stories and others on Transport Evolved. I'm Mark Chatterley, and until next time, stay juiced up! I can't dance. Yeah, sorry. <laughs>